the Padmanabhaswami Temple, located in Tiruvananthapuram, Kerala, southern India, has an extreme mystery attached to it. It has six vaults, A, B, C, D, E and F. The location of these vaults can be easily placed as per one of the judgments of the Supreme Court of India in relation to this temple. Let us have a look at the location of these vaults, also known as Kalarai. Inside the center of the temple is the Sri Coil. It is the sanctum of the deity Sri Padmanabhaswami. Inside the Sri Coil, to the north, is one vault. This vault is next to an idol known as Vishwaksanar. To the southeastern corner of this Sri Coil is another vault. To the north of the Sri Coil is the Nalam Balam, inside which is the Chandana Mandapam. There are four vaults here. Inside the Shandana Mandapam is a vault, and that vault is the unopened Vault B. The remaining three vaults are outside the Chandana Mandapam, but inside the Nalam Balam. One to the southwest, one to the northwest, and one north. There you go. But why do you think that Vault B is unopened? This is because people who were associated with the opening of the vault either died or lost a family member. Their death was mysterious and sudden. How intriguing! A vault with no locks and no bolts, but guarded by snakes, Nagabandhanam. It is said that it can only be opened through the proper and perfectly pronounced and chanted Garuda Mantra. However, it has to be chanted only by an extremely learned scholar who is a very powerful yogi. Now moving on, here is the experience of the person who actually saw the vaults when they were opened. This was because he was an Indian administrative service officer who retired as the chief secretary of the government of Kerala, also being on the Devaswam Temple Management Board. He explains what he saw in an interview to Kaumudi, a Kerala television channel. One, it was not easy to enter the vaults. There was too much carbon dioxide in the air. The fire department had to induce oxygen so that the vault could be entered. Two, the vaults are not very large but contain lots of items. Three, the jewelry was made for Lord Padmana Bhaswami. Many of them were long necklaces, some about 16 feet long. Some were made of plain gold and some studded with real rubies, emeralds and diamonds. Four, the chests were so old that they were becoming powdery at the bottom. Five, there were many lockets that were studded with exquisite gems, several waist belts with amazing gold designs and gemstones. Six, it was impossible to count the number of gems. The only way was to weigh the jewelry one by one. Seven, 5,000 billion is the bare minimum worth based on weight. Just imagine, if all the gems are valued individually, what a treasure. Other than this, there were the Sarapulis, which are pure gold coin necklaces, having 1,200 pure gold coins. Some were encrusted with precious stones, and these necklaces weighed between 3.5 kilo and 10.5 kilo. There were also gold coconut shells studded with rubies and emeralds. Several 18th century Napoleonic era coins, hundreds of thousands of gold coins of the Roman Empire, and solid gold crowns which were all studded with diamonds and other precious stones. Importantly, there are over 3,000 surviving bundles of Kajan leaves records in archaic Malayalam and Tamil, each bundle consisting of 100,000 leaves which relate to donations of gold and precious stones made exclusively to the temple over the millennia. They are yet to be deciphered fully. Before we faint, Imagining all this, let us also know the story that became the reason for the Supreme Court to hand over the management of the temple to the royal family. Let us dive into the story. There was a time when Etuvetil Pilamas, who were nobles, jointly, along with the Brahmins who managed the temple, plotted against Marthandavarma becoming the king. They tried to install the previous king's son instead of him, but clever Marthandavarma succeeded against them. Marthandavarma took over full control of the state and the Padmanabha Swami temple. After this, there was a huge fire and the entire temple 
was in bad shape. However, the Sanctum Santorum remained intact. King Marthandavarma rebuilt the temple. But do you know an even more shocking thing he did? Marthandavarma enslaved himself to Lord Padmanavaswamy. He declared himself the Dasa, or servant of the Lord, and assumed the name Padmanabhadasa. Here comes the fantastic mix of history and law. The Supreme Court of India observed that there was a formal religious ceremony invoking the deity. Matandavarma arrived at the appointed time in the morning, accompanied by all male and female family members. In the presence of the temple priest and all others, the Maharaja submitted a written deed of gift carrying his signature. He gifted his entire state of Travancore along with his total right on it by placing the crown, the royal umbrella, the twin white fans and the manikanda, a jewel worn near the neck, which were all symbols of royalty along with some basil leaves. But most significant, his famous sword, the unquestioned insignia of sovereign authority, which the king valued the most, was also placed with the utmost reverence by the Maharaja on the step which leads into the temple Sanctum Sanctorum. Then the king received the sword back from the high priest and returned to the palace after worship. The gift deed, when translated, read as transfer by absolute gift and dedication to endure as long as the sun and moon shall last, all the lands and rights. Interestingly, Every child born to the erstwhile royal family is made a servant of Lord Padmanabha before the Sanctum Sanctorum. Whenever a member of the royal family passes away, the Virali Patu, a silk cloth with which the deity is adorned, is sent from the temple to cover the body before the cremation. After observing all these aspects, Supreme Court also looked into the law. Previous judgments had recognized a Hindu idol as a juristic personality, so God could own property. The court held that there was Sebaitship, one who manages the properties of God, and that therefore the management of the temple would remain with the royal family. Thus, the royal family won the battle in the Supreme Court of India. Moving on, in 2015, a widely circulated newspaper, The Hindu, confirmed that there was a secret pathway from the Sri Padam Pond leading to Sri Padam Palace adjacent to Sri Padmanabhaswami Temple. Then, is there a connection between the palace and the temple? But that is not all. Sri Padmanabhaswami Temple is a Hindu temple dedicated to Lord Vishnu and one of the 108 temples revered by the worshippers of Vishnu. The idol is said to be made of 12,000 shaligram stones, that's a rare black fossil stone, and covered with gold. Over the years, the camphor suit covered the gold, and the idol looked black. In 2001, it was discovered that the idol was covered with gold. Now here is something more shocking, the age of the temple. In the set of hymns called Divya Prabandham or Thruvaimosi, the hymn numbers 3902 to 3912, contain a reference to Lord Padmanabhaswami. These were written by the saint poet Namalvar. This means the temple is over 5,000 years old. Why? Namalvar was born 43 days after Kali Yuga began. At the age of 16, he wrote these hymns. That means the temple dates back to about 5,141 years. Amazing, ain't it? This very Namalvar wrote poems on Lord Rama too. And when you speak of Rama, there is a very interesting story about how a bird Sampati helped Rama find Sita with his extraordinary vision. So don't forget to watch the next video. See you again there.